Are you tired of using spiky sprigs and pebble spears for every single playthrough you have, and then you use it for about a week until you can craft something good? Then you've come to the right place, because in today's video I'm going to show you a bunch of weapons and armors that can help you kill those not-so-little bugs early in the game instead of them killing you. The first collection of weapons we're going to look at is the Rotten Set. That includes the Rotten Bee Armor, the Rotten Larva Blade, the Rotten Red Ant Club, the Rotten Slime Lantern, Rotten Stinger Spear, and the Rotten Fin Flops. Before we get into where to find these items, let's go ahead and look at the items differences between the Rotten Variants and the Normal Variants. Starting with the Bee Armor, the Rotten Bee Face Mask and Bee Shin Guards both have a defense rating of 5 as compared to the craftable versions 7.5. The Shoulder Pads for the Rotten Variant has a defense rating of 12 compared to the Shoulder Pads of the craftable ones at 15. The Mask and Shin Guards have a resistance level of 2.5 for both sets and the Shoulder Pads have an, a resistance level of 5 for both sets. Both sets still have the peace effects of bow stun, but the only difference is the Rotten set does not have the set bonus of Pollen Shot. The next item is the Rotten Fin Flops, which give you a 2.5 in damage reduction and a 2% in damage resistance, uh, compared to a 6% and a 2.5%. The Minor Swim Speed upgrade for the Rotten Fin Flops is compared to the Swim Speed and Major Swim Speed of the Fin Flops and Fin Flops Plus. They both also give you sprint distance, which the Rotten does not. Now on to the weapons. We are going to look at the Rotten Larva Blade first. Uh, it does a combo damage of 91827 compared to the regular of 102030. They both swing fast. They both apply a poison damage to the target when it is hit. And the only difference between the two is the durability of the Rotten Larva Blade drains a little quicker. The next item is the Rotten Red Ant Club. The damage difference between the two are a little bit bigger than the Larva Blades at a 21-42-63 compared to a 30-60-90. So crafting the regular Red Ant Club is a little better than having the Rotten one, but the Rotten one is for free, so that doesn't really matter. Next up is the Rotten Stinger Spear, doing a damage combo of 11-23-34 compared to the 16-32-58. So the damage is a little like the club, but not too crazy. They're both a fast swing type and both have the effect of the crit hit chance. There is no difference between the Rotten Slime Lantern and regular Slime Lantern, so we're going to go ahead and just move on to showing you where to find all of them. The first item on the list is the Slime Lantern. Uh, you want to go to the Oak Lab, come down to where the hole is blown into the wall, jump down, drop down, and then there's a little cave right here. I would recommend having one of the uh, gill tubes and a lantern of some kind so you can see under the water. Uh, but you want to follow this along here. It's just a, it's a pretty long cave and also bring some kind of weapon because once you get down here, there is a spider down here that will attack you. Uh, and right here is the rotten slime lantern. After getting the lantern out of the water cave, you will have to actually exit out of the old red ant cave. Uh, so there are two, usually two soldier ants that are sitting by that area. And then the one down here, once you get down here, sometimes there's a few, sometimes there's not any. So you do need to be careful leaving the cave. You can just outrun them if you want. Uh, but I would recommend bringing at least a few weapons, if not some armor. To, to get out of this ant cave. The second item on the list is the Rotten Stinger Spear. It is located near the ro uh, Raspberry Puncho. Uh, you want to jump on this stick here that goes down under these lily pads. Go to the farthest lily pad there and jump straight down. You will need to be a little careful here because there are the water spiders that can do some damage if in a group. Once you're down, uh, you'll see the T-Rex head right here. And then at the tooth right there, you'll see the Stinger and this one's not too hard to get, but you do want to be careful with your oxygen because you can lose it quite fast here. The last item in the pond area and the third item on our list located between the shed and the tree is the fin flops. Uh, you want to come to this lily pad here and drop straight down. Uh, just go a little bit to the side of this rock and go directly underneath it. There is a little cave entrance right here. Inside the cave, you will find a spider, so I would bring some uh, gear to fight that's that spider. I think that's the only one that spawns in here. Uh, just from just to the right of the cave entrance, there is a little dead body. That's where you can get your fin flops. 
for the fourth item on the list, not too far from the hedge or the girthed head, uh, next to the tree that has fallen down or the branch that has fallen down, you can find the larva blade right over here underneath a leaf next to the billy hogs, a hot dog tainer. Um, the rotten larva blade is probably one of the easiest to come by uh, early game. Um, it does do you know, a decent amount of damage, better than your pebble spear and stuff like that. So this is the one I would recommend getting first out of all of these. Uh, it is also the easiest. I would be careful in this area because it can be a bit dangerous. There are larvae crawling all around and there's also two wolf spider spawns. One under these pile of leaves right here, not too far from this. And another wolf spider spawn right over there. You should see them right there through the grass. The next items on the list are actually a set of three that you could find here at the Red Ant Hill. Um, it is the Rotten Bee face mask, the Rotten Bee shin guards, and the Rotten Bee shoulder pads. All three were found within the Ant Hill. I would recommend coming here with a set of Red Ant armor. That way that the ants do not try to kill you while you're inside. As you're exploring the Red Ant Hill looking for your Burgle Chip, which is right here, you can also find the shoulder pads right here. So within the same room as the burgle chip, you can find the first piece of the three, which is the shoulder pads. The next piece of armor you can find is in this centralized room with a hole in it. Um, you can come right over here to where these uh, red ant eggs are and pick up the rotten bee shin guards right here. Last but not least, the entrance is that way. So if you're coming down this way and follow this straight, keep going past all of these ants, You'll come to a room with a lot of roots. You'll take a left and follow this little cliff side around this way. Take a slight left. Follow this down this path. Take another slight left. And then right here at this ledge, you can jump up then jump up again. Right here is your rotten bee face mask. Our next item on the list is probably just as easy, if not maybe even easier to get than the larva blade. Uh, the only issue with this one is it does have a handful of orb weavers that kind of are asleep near it. So if you can sneak around them and get into this little cave here in the hedge, then you should be good to go. Uh, the item that we're talking about here is actually the Red Ant uh, Club. It is a good tier 2 club that is does some decent damage. Um, you can also find some brittle marble here and an ant totem recipe and a journal in turn. Uh, recon journal um, and also a ton of ant heads on sticks so yeah there's that but uh, this is the ant, the red ant club and it is a pretty good weapon to start with uh, but you do need to be careful getting to it uh, because of the spiders that are outside of the cave that'll do it for all of the weapons and armors for the rotten collection set uh, there is one more set of armor considered I would say probably to be a little bit more difficult to get. It is the crusty roly poly armor. You can find these pieces in the mid to early late game locations. So that would be the um, sand pit, the trash bins in the back behind the sand pit, and then the picnic tables castle. For the first piece of the roly poly armor, you're gonna wanna come into the picnic tables castle. You're gonna take a left, take a right, and then behind this statue, you're gonna find the roly-poly leg plates. For the second piece of the armor, uh, you're gonna wanna just pass the castle and come down to the zip line into the sandbox area. Once you've entered the sand pit, uh, you'll come over to the blue bucket near the oasis. There'll be an antlion hole that you'll have to kill the antlion to get into. Once in, you'll continue straight down this path. Now remember, this is the uh, salt mine, so you will have antlions that are down here, you'll have to fight a couple more. But if you go to the center post right here, uh, right behind that rock, there'll be your breastplate. And that is your second piece to the armor set. The last item's location is inside the trash can. You are gonna need a gas mask to get in here or you will die. Uh, so you can hop across this moldy hot dog and jump across here. There's this soda can right here. And then you'll find your roly poly helmet right there. Now, with the roly-poly helmet, I have heard that there are a few different locations that it can spawn. Um, I only know of that one there. That's the only place that I've had it spawn for me. But I have heard that there's a couple other spots within the garbage can. If I find those, I will give an updated video.
Alrighty guys, that's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button. And if you do want to see more like this, hit the subscribe button. And I hope to see you guys in the next one.